This is video 7 in topic 10 on how does a compass work. In this video we're going to be looking at the force between two current carrying wires. Now as a result of the formula F is equal to BIL sine theta which describes the force felt by a current in the magnetic field Combined with the equation B is equal to mu naught I over 2 pi R, which describes the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. We can understand that there should be a force between two parallel current carrying wires. Now, this is because imagine that this one here is wire 1. Wire 1, if there's a current flowing through it, generates a magnetic field. So this magnetic field wraps around here like this, so it's coming towards you, say, at wire 2 here. So wire 2 is now a current carrying wire inside a magnetic field, the magnetic field produced by wire 1 here. And so this means that wire 2 must feel a force. Let's now derive an equation to describe the size of and direction of the force felt by wire 2. Okay, so here we have wire 1 and here we have wire 2. Let's start by assuming that the current is flowing in the same direction in each of these wires. In this case, we have the force felt by wire 2 is equal to B I L sine theta. Now this magnetic field is the magnetic field which is caused by wire 1. So we have that B is due to wire 1 is equal to mu naught I1. This is I1, the current in wire 1. This one up here is the current in wire 2 over 2 pi R. Let's call the distance between these two wires D. And so we've got the, that the magnetic field at a distance d, so here at y2, is equal to mu naught i1 over 2 pi d. And now let's calculate the direction of that, or work out the direction of that. In this diagram, if you wrap your fingers around the wire and point your thumb up in the direction of i1, then you can see that the magnetic field lines are coming out the page at i2. So um, out of page or out of screen. So now what we can do is we can substitute this B in here. So we have the force felt by wire 2 is equal to mu naught I1 over 2 pi D times, and then this is I2. Now this L, this is the length of the parallel wires carrying current. So L in this diagram is from there to there. If we had wires which were just parallel for a short length, the L would be this length here. Now, sine theta, that's the angle between the magnetic field caused by wire 1, which is up out of the page, and the current flowing through wire 2. So when we've got parallel wires, these are always going to be at 90 degrees. So this is always going to be sine 90, which is equal to 1. And so we have that the force felt by wire 2 is equal to mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 L on D. And now let's just work out if this is an attractive or a repulsive force. To work out the direction of the force, put your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers point up out of the page, out of the screen, and so you can see that the force is going to be in a direction back towards wire 1, so towards wire 1. Now, if we were to flip the direction of one of these currents, say the current I2, then the force would be away from wire 1. So the force will be repulsive. If the currents travel in opposite directions. But when they're traveling in the same direction, then it's an attractive force. 
Okay, so let's now check our prediction with this demonstration here. Now in this case, I've got a current flowing out of here. When I close the switch, it'll go through the switch and into this red wire here. The red wire goes up here, so the current flows down here, and then it flows up the other side before going through the blue wire back to our battery here. So if it's flowing down here and up here, then we've got currents flowing in opposite directions. And we just predicted that if we had currents flowing in opposite directions, there should be a repulsive force between those two wires. So let's now switch the switch. Again, we've got very high currents here, so we're only going to keep the switch closed for a very short time and see if there is indeed a repulsive force between our two. Did you see when I switched the switch how the wires moved apart? Let's just have another look at that. Okay. Now what we can actually do is we can make it so that the current flows in the same direction between the two wires. So if you remember back to the electric circuits that we did in the streetlight topic, what we're going to need now is these wires to be in parallel. So, <coughs> so how I'm going to do that? going to disattach the power cable from up here. I shall attach these two wires to each other here and reattach this power cable down the bottom here. So what happens now is when the current flows through the batteries, it, can, it passes from this red wire and it can go up both of these wires here. And when it gets to the top here, it goes through this blue wire and returns back to the battery. So we now have the situation where the currents are both flowing in the same direction. And we made the prediction that in this case, these wires should feel an attractive force. So let's check our prediction. There we go. They're sticking together a bit down here. So they are feeling a force of attraction for each other. And again. Okay, let's do a worked example now of how we may want to use this equation. So the question is, a current carrying loop with I2 is equal to 7.5 amps is set up next to a current carrying wire with current 10 amps as shown in the diagram. Ignore any external forces such as gravity. Part A, calculate the net force on side 1. Part B, calculate the force on side 3. C, comment on the relationship between the forces felt on sides 2 and 4. Part D, calculate the net force on the loop. OK, so to answer part A, we know that the force felt on wire 1, that's this side here of the loop, is just given by mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 L on D. This is just our formula for the force felt on two parallel current carrying wires. So all we need to do is substitute in the numbers that are appropriate for this case. So mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. This is all divided by the 2 pi. And then I1, that is 10 amps. I2 is 7.5 amps. Now L, that's the length of parallel wire, which is 20 centimetres. So we can put that as 0 0.20 metres. And then D, that's the distance between the two wires. So in this case, it's 10 centimetres or 0 0.10. So solving that on the calculator, we get 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. And now as it's a force, we should give a direction. These two are carrying current in the same direction, and so they're going to feel an attractive force. So the direction is towards wire 1. OK, now part B, we need to do the same thing, but now for side 3, this side here. So we're going to substitute into the same equation, F3 is equal to mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 L on D, but we'll have slightly different values this time. So 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 over 2 pi is the same. 
I1 still 10, I2 still 7.5, L is still 20 centimeters, but the distance between them this time is the 10 centimeters plus the 10 centimeters, so that's over 0 0.20. These will cancel out, and solving this on the calculator, we end up with 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons, and in this case, these currents are traveling in opposite directions, and so this is a repulsive force, so the direction is away from wire 1. Okay, part C. Now, in this case, we've got wire 2 here, well, side 2 here and side 4 here. Let's consider the direction of the forces acting on these two sides. In order to do that, we're going to need to consider the magnetic field generated by this wire here. So using the right hand rule, you can see it will be coming up out of the screen on this side of the wire and going down into the screen on this side of wire 1. And so these sides, sides 2 and sides 4, are both located in the magnetic field which is going into the page. So using our right hand rule, you can line your fingers up, your thumb up with this current and point your fingers into the screen and you can see that the force on this side is up in this direction and on this side the current is flowing in the opposite direction so the force is also in the opposite direction. And now the magnetic field strength is proportional to the distance from the wire. And so the magnetic field is stronger at this end than at this end. But this distance and this distance are the same. So for each little increment up here, there's a little increment down here with the same amount of current, it's always 7.5 amps, in the same magnitude of magnetic field, but with the force felt in the opposite direction. So what we'll see is that wire 2 and wire 4 have exactly the same force acting on them, but those forces act in opposite directions. So let's write that down. So sides 2 and 4 both feel a force as they are current carrying wires in the magnetic field. And that magnetic field is generated, well, generated by wire 1. Side 2 feels an upwards force while side 4 experiences a downwards force. These forces have the same magnitude but opposite direction. Okay, so that's answer part C. Now part D says calculate the net force on the loop. So to get the net force, all we need to do is add up all the forces acting around this loop. Now we've just said that 2 and 4 are equal but opposite, which means that they cancel each other out. So we can ignore sides 2 and 4. So the F net is equal to F1 plus F3. These are in opposite directions as well. So we can put 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 minus 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5, and that is towards wire 1, because this will be minus 1.5 times 10 minus 4, 5 towards wire 1. 1. Okay, so this is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons towards wire 1. And that has solved that problem. 
So in this video, you've seen the force between two current carrying wires. You've seen that the size of the force can be calculated using the formula B is equal to mu naught on 2 pi I1 times I2 L divided by D. And you've seen that when the current is travelling in the same direction, this is an attractive force. When the currents travel in opposite directions, we've got a repulsive force. In the next video, we're going to be looking at some uses of current carrying wires. Thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this video.